I will uh, talk to you about two things today. One is a few uh, elements, a few information of the luxury industry, because we are in a business school here, so we are be talking more about the business of luxury. And then I will share with you a few, uh, a few concepts of luxury brand management, you know, how these luxury brands are so good at creating this, this dream, these emotions around their products and around their brands. Today, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you also you are here for this reason, the luxury industry, which is probably difficult to define, by the way, but we all have some ideas of what this industry includes. It's a very serious topic. Uh, there is a lot of uh, investors, there is a lot of profits, there is a lot of turnover, there is a lot of greediness also, and competition between these actors, that for sure it is today a very important sector. Okay? So that's the first thing. And we are talking about billions of euros when we are talking about dozens of millions 30 years ago. So that's a radical transformation. We are here talking about something which is very significant, also in terms of employment, uh, also in terms of growth potential, etc. So, you know, you had this kind of transformation in from very small family houses, very unprofessional, which were only interested in creating and, and pr producing in their workshops, you know, products, beautiful products, and it became, it became all this, you know, and to make a long story short, I would say we have entered in a world of brands. Of course, they still create luxury products or luxury services, but they are brands, okay? So there is a strong marketing, marketing element. It's not just about the product. To give you an overview, and you know, this is interesting because uh, 10 years ago or nine years ago when I started here, I would not have shown you that slide because this, is, this was not the way people looked at the luxury industry at that time. Eight years ago, people looked at the luxury industry mostly through the prism of LVMH, which was really about different pillars, which were the personal luxury pillars, you know, fashion accessories, Wines and spirit, even if here they were classified here, but wines and spirit was one pillar. Beauty, beauty, watchers and jewelry, the traditional pillars. Today, this is a very significant part. Most of the brands which probably bring you here, make you dream the most, they are in that category. But at the same time, you know, the business reality is that you have in the middle luxury cars. Alors, where does it start? Where does it stop? You know, we could talk about that. And then you have everything which is called here by the uh, BCG, because this is extracted from a recent presentation of Jean-Marc Belaïch, one of the partners of the BCG in New York. He wanted to say something here. He wanted not only to give you some figures, he wanted to show that today luxury is not just about ownership, even if it is still, to a large extent, about ownership. But he wanted to say that more and more there is a shift towards experience, towards experiencing luxury, which, of course, is very good news for all the people who are working in the home, uh, real estate, travel, hotel business. Today, you know, they suggested that we could look at this market with a wider eyes, and then, you know, the figures are no more 200, 300 billion, but one trillion, which is more than 1,000 billion. <laughs> Big money, huh? uh, big money. Alors, there is one word, if there is only one word you should remember from this presentation, because it's not really a real class, it's more a teaser. This word is, of course, the word dream. And, and that's probably, you know, the most uh, striking or the most interesting part of this, uh, you know, of this industry, the art of creating dreams, the art of selling dreams. In any normal sector, FMCG, fast uh, uh, moving consumer goods, whatever, you can measure the potential of your market. Um, some of you probably work in those sectors. If you work for a bank, you know, you, you, you have competition, you can measure the, you know, the size, the population, the number of households, how many, you know, real estate, uh, uh, how many, you know, loans you can put in place. Yeah, there is a sort of potential of the market. If you're selling uh, wash, wish, um, dishwashers, you can measure also the number of households, 
one televisions, one, two, three per household. In the luxury industry, there is no such potential. What does it mean? It means that it's difficult on one end to measure the potential, the size of the market. On the other end, it means it's unlimited. It's potentially unlimited because these products, in essence, they are not needed. They are, I would even say, they are totally useless. You don't need another tie. You don't need another suit most of the time. You have enough that you like if you like to dress up or shoes or bags. Someone who likes uh, cosmetics, my wife loves cosmetics. There is no limitation to the number of fragrance <laughs> or skincare creams she can get, she can have, she can receive as a gift. That's the beauty of it. Products which are useless because they do not cater to needs, they cater to dreams. Result, consequence, unlimited but market potential. Another world of introduction, I cannot not say it. The luxury map is changing, is evolving extremely fast. And again, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, I would not have said that, you know. 30 years ago, when I started in this industry, American consumers were the most important. We were looking at the exchange rate between the US dollar and the euro. The Americans would buy more or less when they come to Europe, depending on the exchange rate. And today, just talking about this sounds a little bit, you know, old-fashioned. Today, it's about Asia. It's about emerging markets. So, you know, obviously, things have changed dramatically. Um, even Japan, you know, who has been a major player after or before the U.S. market. Today, you know, the importance of Japan, relatively speaking, is less because of the emerging markets, Asian markets, China phenomenon. Obviously, this industry today, because they have learned, these brands have become very smart, believe me. If there was a little bit of amateurism 20, 30 years ago, today they are very smart, at least in terms of brand management. So they know well the art of luxury branding, which is the art of selling dream. And I will share with you uh, a few, just a few parts of this art. <clears throat> 